this lecture is for chapter 6 and also chapter 7. Chapter 6 is a continuation. The title is called Additional Suffixes and Digestive System Terminology. So remember chapter 5 was the digestive system and introductory went through a lot of the anatomy and physiology. Here are more blue boxes and flashcards for you to make. We go through suffixes first right at the very beginning of the chapter. Um, we have ectasis, ectasia, emesis, pepsia, phasia, plasty, tissus. Do you see that? P-T-Y-S-I-S. -S. You almost spit when you say it, tissus, and it means spitting. Okay, that's kind of one that you, it's, it's kind of easy to remember. Look at the next three, actually four here, the R-R-H's in their spellings. We have Raj, Raja. Rafi and Rhea. Pay close attention to spelling there. Again, spelling's everything in medical terminology. Raj, Raja, Rafi, and Rhea. The RRH is super important to make sure when you're spelling any terms that use these. Spasm, stasis, stenosis, and I would stop here and say, look at all the, I call them watch boxes. Pay attention to all the watch boxes here in this chapter. There's quite a few of them here at the bottom of both of these pages. Make sure you read through all of those. They have great information. And then we have tresia. Underneath now, here's a, um, some writing, and it says, here's some examples of suffixes that are actually used alone as its own separate term or whole word. Emesis or emetic, lysis, spasm, stasis, and stenosis. These are all suffixes, but as you see here, when they're bolded, they don't have the hyphen in front of them, okay? That's what triggers to us that they're a suffix. These are all standalone terms, and they give you examples of, so, of such. More blue boxes here. We have more combining forms. Buco, um, and they want you to write in, it looks a little different here, they want you to write in the meaning. You would write in cheek there in that blank, and then you could write in um, the meaning or the definition of the word buco. You would say al means pertaining to the cheek. Okay, that's the definition you would write down there. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these because we have two chapters to get to here in, in my 15 minutes. Um, it skips right to lab tests. I really want you to pay attention to the LFTs or the liver function tests. Liver function tests are things like ALT and AST. Um, I want you to make sure you understand those. Um, then we get into clinical procedures. They talk about a lower gastrointestinal series and an upper gastrointestinal series, you'll often hear these ordered as an, a lower GI and an upper GI, okay? So know the difference between those. Um, cholangiography and then a CT, okay? Here's maybe the first time that we've hit a CT and you can read through about that. And then also MRI on the next page. When you get to other procedures, you see gastric bypass or bariatric surgery. There's a YouTube video you'll find in your content that you can watch about gastric bypass. It's an animated video that you can watch. It's a good one. There's a lot of good ones out there. Gastrointestinal endoscopy is next. Um, colonoscopies, maybe you've heard of that, you know, most often and um, more current. Uh, nasogastric intubation is on the next page, intubating a, a person. And then at the end is your abbreviations. And really, I have a few highlighted as maybe they're a little more common than others. Um, I have the FOBT, the fecal occult blood test. It's a very common test. Um, occult is hidden. Okay, occult means hidden. So when we're looking for occult blood, it's hidden blood. And what that means um, is if you're thinking about your digestive system and, and your intestines, um, if you have bright red blood per rectum, you see that above in the abbreviations there, bright red blood per rectum or hematochesia, that means the blood or the ulcer or the polyp that's bleeding is very close to 
the anus or where you know it exits the body the blood is very close it's still bright red a cold blood what happens when blood dries or blood gets old it gets dark right okay what color normally are your stools dark right so you can have blood in your stools and not even know and that's what the FOBT is looking for, the fecal occult blood test. It's looking for old blood, meaning the blood is coming up higher or coming from somewhere up higher. Um, polyps or ulcers up higher in your intestinal tract before it gets to the anus so that by the time it gets down there and, and um, you get rid of it and you have elimination, it's already dark. And so you can't even tell that there's blood in there. Okay, And that's what that test uh, is looking for. GERD is very common, gastroesophageal reflux disease, IBD, LFTs, NPO, nothing per os or nothing by mouth is also a very good abbreviation for you. And then that would be the end of chapter six. Moving on to chapter seven, chapter seven starts the urinary system. The urinary system a lot of anatomy and physiology again at the beginning anatomy of the major organs um, and if you were um, marking these or labeling these on that first page uh, the kidneys are number one the ureters are both number two again you have one on each side the bladder is number three and the urethra is number four um, we talk about, I, I like some of these terms in this chapter um, in the urinary system um, on page 218 or under the physiology or how the kidneys actually produce urine. Um, this is pretty intense here, how you can see how they, you know, filter um, and, and absorb and secrete all of these, all of these um, substances. But really the magic happens in the glomeruli. And that's kind of a hard word to say, the glomeruli or the glomerulus. Okay, say that word a few different times. Your tongue wants to kind of twist in in a, in a knot when you say it, but make sure you you can really say that out loud. Um, it really takes that waste, and that's where um, everything filters out and fills up there in the middle of that kidney, and then flows down the ureters to the bladder, and that's when we, you know, it's filled when we feel that we need to go to the restroom, and then we empty. Your vocabulary is pretty small, little yellow box there for you to be able to go through um, on the first page, and then it, it's, you know, the whole next page, and then we get to our blue boxes. And here, when we're looking at our blue boxes, um, they start with structures. Okay, again, this is urinary system. So, cali calio and calico both are for the calyx, okay, or meaning cup shaped. So, if we said calicile, that was one of the terms that's listed there, the second one, calicile. AL means pertaining to, okay, or EAL means pertaining to and it would be the calyx, okay? Or you could say pertaining to cup-shaped. Either one is totally fine. Cysto here means urinary bladder. Now you need to be careful when we get to skin, you're gonna see cysto, exactly the same, exactly the same spelling, and it means something different, okay? So a lot of my students say, well, how am I supposed to know if we're talking about the urinary system, if it means urinary bladder or if it means a skin, you know, cyst? Um, and what I say to that is you need to pay attention to the context of what you're reading. Are you reading something from a urologist or something about the urinary system or something about the bladder, signs and symptoms? Or are we talking about a dermatologist and the skin? That's how you'll know which definition to use for that. So you will see that. Glomerulo for glomerulus, miato, okay, for the meatus, nephro meaning kidney. You're gonna have a lot of different ones that mean kidney here. Pylo meaning the renal pelvis. Okay. They use pylolithotomy, but we also hear a pylogram. Okay. Um, within that, under the pylolithotomy, you see a large calculus is a stone, a calculi is a stone. Okay, kidney stone. You can get stones lots of places on the body. Reno is kidney, um, as well as, as nephra was on the page before. They talk about colic there, so that's important for you to read. Uh, the trigonal for the trigon or the trigony. Um, it's said both different ways. Either way is okay. 
ureteral for the ureter, okay, and urethro for the urethra. Be really careful with those. They are so close, a little bit different in spelling, a lot different in definition and anatomy, okay? Be really careful keeping straight ureteral and urethro. Okay, vesicle also means urinary bladder. And I think you see this a little more often. I think there's some marketing on TV about vesicare. Okay, for those people that have to go to the bathroom a lot. Um, so it has to deal with the bladder, so it makes sense. Substances, urinary signs and symptoms. We've got a, a bunch of combining forms here. Um, and then suffixes uh, are mixed in there kind of as well. If you look at kind of the bottom of that next page, there's a lot of ureas. You see the suffix urea, meaning urination or urine condition. We have dysuria, anuria, hematuria, glycosuria, polyuria. All of these are very different. There's a lot of different ureas. Up above a little bit, I'm looking at page 227 under Euro, um, enuresis. Do you see enuresis? It says literally a condition, which is esis, of being in urine, which is bedwetting. Enuresis is, is wetting the bed. If you turn to urinalysis, I also have a YouTube video on urinalysis that you can watch. Um, it's about just under two minutes long that's really good all of these things look at these 10 listed things here on these two pages just from giving a urine sample in a cup an inch or two is all you got to provide right they're looking for all of these things within our urine so it's kind of important and kind of interesting if you want to take a look at that finishing up the chapter then with associated conditions then um, looking through all of these you see that term nephrolithiasis nephrolithiasis nephro meaning kidney lith meaning stone and iasis is that abnormal condition polycystic kidney disease polycystic kidney disease or PKD there's a picture below of that um, the term, the bold term in the paragraph of pyelonephritis, in that paragraph, do you see the bold term parenchyma? It's kind of a funny one to say. Say it with me. Parenchyma. Parenchyma, it says, the parenchyma of an organ is its essential and distinctive tissue. Okay, so parenchyma. They're using it here saying poly or pyelonephritis is the inflammation, we got that from itis, right? Of the lining of the renal pelvis and the renal parenchyma or the renal tissue, okay, that essential and distinctive tissue of the kidney. That's the parenchyma. That's a kind of a goofy word that we don't encounter a lot. I want to make sure that you pay attention to that. Hypertension or high blood pressure um, is listed on the next page. Make sure you read uh, really good about that. Know the differences here between, at the bottom of the next page, your diabetes, um, diabetes insipitus, and diabetes mellitus. Insipitus, and you can read about it, but I kind of have underlined under insipitus in that paragraph, dilute urine reflecting very dilute and watery urine. So I kind of have that written in. It's a water issue or watery urine. And in diabetes mellitus, if you read under that, it's a sugar or sweet issue. Okay, and again, that's the most common and I have that written in my book too. So under insipidus, it's watery urine. It's a water issue. Under diabetes mellitus, it's a sugar or sweet issue. And it's again, the most common. Um, the laboratory tests are good for you to read through. There is uh, another YouTube um, about dialysis that I'll post for you. And then in abbreviations, I would say at the end of the urinary system here, ADH, antidiuretic hormone is good. BUN, a very common uh, blood test, blood urea nitrogen. Okay, and then the last three, three there, UA for urinalysis, again, very common test, UTI for urinary tract infection, and the VCUG, voiding cystourethrogram. If you missed reading about that in the chapter because we didn't hit it in the lecture, go back and read about it. It's super interesting.